war really all about? The war is really all about heaven and hell. The real terrorist is Satan. That's what the rearing of your children is really all about. We're to rear our children to care about other people with seeing heaven and hell in view and we are to help our kids become an influence on a lost and dying world so we can get a bunch of people going to heaven. The great family is not your family. The great family is the family of God and one day we will sit around His table at the wedding supper and we will all enjoy what families really all about. Right now, we're divided into little units called families and we're to rear our kids and straighten out our marriage. Why? Because this world needs a good testimony from you so you can share him with them and we can all go to heaven someday. We lose track of what it's really all about. You see, for our church, our revival that we're experiencing right now, it's great. For Satan, this revival is terrible. He'd be ticked off. For the church, these days of great victory as we're experiencing here, it's a victory for us. For Satan, these days are a great defeat. For our church, these are days of soul winning. For the devil, these are days of soul losing. All saved people that are right with God want others to be born again. But get this, all of hell is against those souls being saved. What's the real contention in this life all about? What are the real frustrations in your life all about? What are the trials in your life all about? What are the burdens in your life all about? What are the hardships in your life all about? It's all about the souls of men. It's all about an eternity where there's a heaven and a hell. Satan will use anything he can to get you down. Satan wants to take you off the firing line. Satan does not want you to influence others for Jesus Christ. And that's where the battle really lies. It's a real war, by the way. We're not playing war games. All Christians are to tell others about Jesus Christ. It's called soul winning. As Dr. Bush read to you earlier from Ephesians chapter 6, this passage of Scripture speaks of the armor that is used for battle. And the Bible says we are battling against the rulers of darkness. Hey, accept it. Our enemy is bigger than Osama bin Laden. Our enemy is bigger than Saddam Hussein. Our enemy is the ruler and the rulers of darkness. The Bible says here in describing this armor that the Christian is to wear, it says our feet are to be shod with the preparation of the gospel. You say, what is that? That's soul winning. That's telling others about Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we are to carry the shield of faith. You were saved by faith. Now that you live by that very faith. But we are to carry a shield of faith. Our feet are to be shod with the preparation of the gospel. The Bible says here that Satan will shoot fiery darts at us. I notice in verse number 17, the Holy Spirit of God is mentioned. It talks about the sword of the Spirit. And then in verse 18, he is mentioned again in the Spirit, the Bible says. Do you see, the Holy Spirit of God is in a sense our on-site commander-in-chief. And the devil is bombing the twin towers of your life and my life. And it is goal to take a whole bunch of people out and, and to put them down and to make them useless and to try to discourage them. But I've got news for you. Our commander-in-chief will rise up in your life. He wants to use you. He wants to use you so you'll have a fulfilling life and no truly born again. Christian has a truly fulfilled life until they start influencing others to go to heaven because that's why they were left here. Hey, if you help with some fellowship that we have around here and you stir the mashed potatoes, I'm glad that you did, but that will not take the place of you telling others about Jesus Christ. 
You help to mow the lawn, and God knows it needs. Uh, uh, we need help in mowing the lawn. We've got a lot of property here that will not take the place of you telling others about Jesus Christ. You see, there's somebody out there that God left you behind to tell, and if you don't tell them, you're in trouble with God. And they're in worse trouble because you're already born again, but they're not. What's the real war? The real war is be between Satan and Jesus Christ and his army and God's army. And whether you like it or not, you are in the army of the Lord. You see, the Holy Spirit here is mentioned. He is the key to the victory when battling against Satan. You say, oh, Brother Owen, this is kind of scary. I'm in a war, and you're making it very real today. I mean, I am battling against Satan. You say, I'm scared. I've got good news for you. He's not going to require you to fight the battle on your own. You see, the Bible says here that the Holy Spirit is available to you. He is, he is called, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 8, he's called the Holy Spirit. In 1 John 5, 7, he's called the Holy Ghost. In Mark chapter 1, verse number 10, they picture him as a heavenly dove. In Psalm chapter 92, verse number 10, it talks about him being fresh oil. He, the, the, the Spirit often is referred to as oil in the Bible. And in Psalm 92, 10, he is fresh oil. Now I want you to understand something. Jesus Christ, through the person of the Holy Spirit, he fought many battles. He fought many battles with Satan. Let me tell you about the most intense battle that Jesus Christ ever fought with Satan. It was the battle after Jesus Christ was crucified and placed into a tomb. The greatest battle... The greatest battle, turn me up just a little bit, Brother Brett, this thing is not matching. We got it? Okay. Back it off just a little, if you will. The greatest battle ever fought was a battle when Satan did all he could to torture Jesus Christ. It was back when Satan and the imps of hell wanted to see Jesus bruised, battered, bloodied, embarrassed, nails in his hands, nails in his feet, a spear in his side, a crown of thorns upon his head. They spat upon him. They gave him vinegar and gall to drink. They stripped him of his garments, beat him with the cat of nine tails, took staves or sticks and beat him. They beat him and abused him and mocked him and did everything they could to hurt him. And then Jesus died. And then they placed him in a tomb. The big battle was not before the tomb. It was in the tomb. You see, that intense battle between Jesus Christ and Satan took place when Jesus died, they put him in a tomb. They rolled a big stone over the entrance of that tomb. A bunch of the imps of hell said, We got him! We got him! Woo! Hey, victory is ours. We have defeated the Son of God. Thereby, we uh, have defeated heaven. We have, be we have defeated all... Uh, we've defeated God. We are victorious. And the imps had thrown a party to celebrate. I mean, the imps of hell, they were partying hardy. They said, whoa, this is great. Hey, guys, they were high-fiving, you know. They were, whoa, we got him, we got him. I picked these three guys because they remind me of the imps of hell. But they were, they were throwing high-fives. The imps were saying, yeah, we've got him. He's down. Hey, they pronounced him dead. I think one imp looked over at another and said, hey, he, he, he's really dead in the at all. He's dead as a doornail. He's gone. He's out. They put him in the tomb, and so they're partying. They're having themselves a real good time. And Satan said, hey, fellas, you listen to me. Uh, I've dealt with this guy before. Now, see, he was going around shooting his mouth off, and he said he was coming up out of that grave. Now, Satan said, I don't, I, I, I don't give an ounce of belief in that because I don't really think that he's going to do it. But that 
that's what he says he's going to do. You guys, you might want to tone down your party a little bit. Saints say, you know, you know what we probably ought to do? Even, even the soldiers and the authorities that time, they said, we'd better post some soldiers.